this is Jonathan, your fitness business management expert, and in this video, I'm going to go over the psychology of referrals and referral contests for your clients in personal training and boot camps. Um, this really came to me because you know I had a friend that said that they wanted to partner up with me, and they said they had all these great ideas um, to increase my revenue. And the first thing that he brought up was like, have you ever seen like you know, an iPad, you can buy an iPad and you can, um, you can have like a, a contest. Whoever refers the most amount of people within a given amount of time will um, win the iPad. It's a great way to get clients. And I got to tell you that in a lot of cases, it actually is not. I've actually done something like that before. I did it about a year ago and nobody really cared. So let me start off by explaining why in terms of referral contests. So... Uh, I have a boot camp that charges about $200 a month, okay? So, you also have to understand that the type of clientele that generally take my boot camp uh, have kids. And they buy iPads for their kids. Um, they're in a financial situation where they can afford to buy an iPad for their dog if they wanted to. So, for me to say, hey, I'm trying to increase my business, I'll give you an iPad. If you um, if you if you refer the most amount of people, that doesn't really drive them because once you get to a certain um, financial bracket, you're not so much moved by products as much as you're moved by value. Um, you'd be surprised uh, the people that have more than the average income, um, although they may be looked at looked uh, as as cheap, um, it's really just that. They're just not willing to waste money on something. So, for instance, I had a personal training client once who um, who had like serious money. I didn't even know, and um, he was getting charged uh, fifty dollars a month for his membership at the gym. And then um, the gym ran a special for new um, new members um, when you know all of a sudden they dropped their rates to thirty five dollars a month, and he was absolutely livid. Now, this $50 a month for him is really a drop in the bucket, but it was the principle of it all. So, it's more about value than it is about like absolute products. So, getting back to the, um, to the referral contest for the iPads, um, you know, people in that kind of financial situation also are very uh, conscious of how they seem to others. So, they don't want to, you know, look like they're um, running around and trying to, you know, just trying to win this iPad because they can't afford it themselves. Um, they're going to be uh, they're going to be much more likely to refer people if you're to give them something of high value to them, like um, you know free sessions uh, or a free month of the boot camp. Um, I actually have had people more uh, more competitive about winning shirts and, and 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 sweatshirts than about winning the iPad. I swear that when I when I bought the iPad, there were no more than really five people trying to get it. And, um, you know, when I'm giving out shirts, people are really, really obsessed with getting shirts because A, they feel like they earned it based on their own merit, and B, it has a specific value to them. You know, they can't just get it anywhere. So if your training is good and you and you give value to your um, to your products and such, then you can use that as a uh, as something to raffle off. I would say don't go the route of, you know, trying to get an iPad or TV and then saying, well, if you refer the most amount of people, I'll give you this TV because odds are if they're taking your service and they're paying full price, they can afford it anyway and or they already have it. So they really have no need. Like I'm not going to run around like crazy. If I saw somebody raffling off a television to bring people to a Zumba class or something, I'm not going to run around like crazy because I already have a TV, you know, and, um, even so, if I'm going to refer people, it's because I enjoy the Zumba class. It's not going to be because I want to get that television. All right. So, um, finally, you have to consider the value of your prize relative to the cost of one month of your services. So, I don't think it's going to be worth it to raffle off something unless it's worth at least five times the amount of the monthly um, investment of your services. Which is why if you own a gym and your members are paying $30 a month, um, $50 a month, and then if you raffle off an iPad, perhaps people will be more inclined 
to, uh, to participate because you're drawing from a larger pool, um, there are multiple financial brackets, and you're, you'll be more likely to find that the people that are really you know, trying to win that iPad couldn't buy it on their own anyway. So um, if, you, if you have to do a raffle, take your monthly, um, your cost, multiply it by five, and if you're not willing to spend that amount of money, just don't do it. Give them free months of boot camp. People care about, they, they, I think they'd much rather get free time um, of your services, which don't have an absolute value. It has, um, you know, it has a personal value to them, um, a subjective value, if you will, than, you know, something that they can buy in the store at any time, anytime they want it. Um, now, let's talk about um, clients referring other clients just because, or how to get that superstar referring client. Now, I'll tell you that uh, I just happened to be looking through my, uh, my contact management list, and just from Groupons alone, I've seen over 500 boot campers. 500 boot campers have come in and out of my doors um, within the last two years or so. And um, very few of them really refer a lot of people. Now, like I said before, my boot camp costs about $200 a month. I already let people know, if you refer somebody and they stay on for the full month, then you get $100 off your next boot camp. And people don't refer that much, regardless of how easy I make it. I have you know, gift cards that I can give them. Um, you know, I run Groupons. I tell them, you know, just post this on your Facebook page. And um, you know, then your friends can respond. You get credit for it. Tell your friends to put their names in you know the how you hear about us field and such. Um, but there are very small. There's a small percentage of people. I'd say one percent that are like referring superstars. So um, out of my class, there are let's say five people that are responsible for you know fifty people having come through my doors. So the people that can refer can really really refer. So I want you to uh, understand how to identify them and how to keep them because they're worth more to you than the amount of money that they pay you monthly. If I have a superstar referring um, boot camper, they're in for free no matter what because they'll refer four or five or six people that will be with me for a year, six months or so. So they've already paid their way. And they're, you know, it's, it's like having a salesman in-house that really, really loves what they're selling. Have you ever worked someplace? where you were selling something that you didn't really believe in, as opposed to promoting something that you really, really believe in, you sell it differently and you're much more um, convincing. So if you have a boot camper that just happens to be a referring superstar, you want to keep them for free. Uh, and they're going to grow, your boot camp is going to grow quicker than, um, than just trying to uh, you know, charge them and, uh, and not getting anywhere. So um, how do you identify them and uh, how do you categorize them? Um, you want to make sure that you first understand that you don't want to blame the rest of your boot campers for not being able to refer clients because in most cases it's not that it's not their fault. Some of the people that come to your boot camp are coming because you're like their lifeline. They have no other resource within their circle um, to to get exercise or personal training, whatever the case may be. So for them to say to their friends, hey, I'm doing this boot camp, their friends are not going to be moved. That person just has this special kind of personality, and their circle of friends are just not going to be interested anyway. So even if they talk about you like crazy, um, then you're still not going to get their friends. You can't blame them. All you can do is just be happy that they do talk about you. And if at some point they, they come across somebody that wants to listen to them and try a boot camp, be thankful. But don't think that they're not trying. Because in most cases, if people are paying you, and they enjoy you, they're gonna like, you know, they're gonna try to tell their friends about you. Now, there's a second group of people that, um, you know, that may not refer you clients, even though they really like you. And those are the people that just need to get away from their circle. Like, they really just want to work out. And I had a therapist, and it really didn't come to it until I spoke to her. She's like, you know, I really like your boot camp, but she said, everybody in my circle is either a co worker. Or a patient and I like the fact that I, I come here and I have a certain degree of anonymity I don't have to answer questions and it's kind of like uh, being a personal trainer at a gym and everybody knows who you are so once you start to work out on your own what happens everybody asks you questions and you really just want to lift so anytime I had anytime I was working in a gym as a personal trainer I always had a separate gym membership so I wouldn't be bothered 
So these are clients that even though they like your bootcamp, they may never refer people over to you because they just love being by themselves and not having to carry the title wherever they go. So if they don't refer people over to you, you can't blame them. Third type of person that you can't blame is the, um, the boot camper that is just kind of soft spoken or the personal training client that's just kind of soft spoken and not very charismatic. They like your boot camp, but for whatever reason, you know, they're just not very convincing. They're not a convincing type. They're not the type that will gush over anything like they enjoy it. And they may be the quiet person in your class. So, you know, they don't talk much in class. What makes you think they're going to, you know, say, hey, take my boot camp? You know, um, so they're paying you. They're coming to your boot camp class. If they're not referring to a lot of people, you can't be mad at them. Now, who are you going to look for? Who are your, um, your superstar referrers? Now, what I found is uh, superstar referrers tend to also be early adopters. And early adopters are the type of people that um, would go to the movies on opening night before they even saw a review. They're the ones that you know are up on the latest trends, the latest fashions. If they have a new food, instead of um, you know, taking a little sip, they'll take a big bite out of it and they'll just see if they like it or not. These are the kinds of people that are just, um, they're go-getters, they're opinion leaders, and they're, um, they're not afraid to take a chance. So uh, a lot of your um, superstar referrals, uh, superstar referrals are going to be coming early, uh, you know, into your boot camp. Like, um, you know, when I first started, you know, I, I was in the gymnastics facility uh, during an open house, and I was handing out gift cards. Nobody really wanted one except for one woman. Her name is Colleen. She took it. She said, "Yeah, I'll try it." And she was in a group of five other people. There were everybody else said, "No, I don't really want one." I said, "Okay." So Colleen took the boot camp, and um, she's just very popular. She knows everybody. She's like the mayor of the town. And before a year was done, every single person that was in that group. Um, that didn't want the cards on, you know, on the open house, had eventually come through my doors and signed up for boot camp at some time because Colleen did it. So your opinion leaders are the people that you want to make sure that you're making happy. Um, so uh, an, outside of early adopters, you also want to have the people that are just really talkative. The most, the people that are most friendly in your class are probably the types of people that are friendly and talkative outside of class and can get people to do stuff. I have one woman in my class in particular who, who could really, she could sell, you know, ice to an Eskimo. Is that how the, the, uh, the expression goes? She's just like that type of person. So because she's so, um, because she's so convincing, she's somebody that I think will end up bringing a lot of clientele in. So this is the kind of person that you want to keep happy. Um, is there a point where you would say, all right, you need to be uh, coming here for free? I can't say there's a hard and fast rule, but um, I can tell you that after you start to notice that this person just keeps bringing people in, you may want to pull them inside, aside and say, listen, I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, why don't I just take you off the referral program? You just come for free and continue to bring people into the boot camp because they're not doing it consciously to make money. Um, they're doing it because that's just who they are. So keep them happy, keep them in the boot camp. And you never know. They might not be the type of person that could afford the boot camp. So, um, or they wouldn't stay, you know, forever if they had to pay for it. So, even if they can't afford to stay forever, um, you want to keep them for free because they're always going to bring you income. All right. So, uh, so keep your eyes peeled for your superstar referrals uh, and your su superstar referring people. Last sign, if you're going to run a Groupon, a Living Social, an Amazon deal. Um, and you put, you know, the link on Facebook and you send it to all your boot campers, keep an eye peeled for the boot campers that post it on their page. I guarantee you, those are the kind of boot campers that are really trying to get people in the door. So you want to make sure to keep these people, all right? Opinion leaders, early adopters, really friendly people in the class are probably going to be really friendly people outside. Those are the kinds of folks that after you start to see them, they're bringing in a lot of people, you may just want to have them come in for free. Now, um, let's say you're starting off uh, pretty, pretty light in terms of attendance and you want to get more people in. Uh, it's not very uncommon for a trainer to get discouraged uh, because he doesn't have a lot of boot campers in his or her 
a boot camp class who doesn't have a lot of personal training clients. For the person that just isn't very loud, um, then there's one thing that you can do to get referrals from them, and that is be an awesome trainer and get them awesome results. Be on their case all the time. Be on their nutrition, make sure they're eating healthy, and focus on nothing else than getting them to their goal. Because even if they're not a talkative person, if they lose a lot of weight or if they see amazing results and their friends look at them, then the, um, the source is undeniable of their success. And they will seek out that your client and say, how did you do it? And then all the clients will say is, oh, you know, I came to your boot camp. I came to this boot camp. So your last ditch effort. If you don't feel that you can get, that you don't have, you know, a lot of big talkers and a lot of convincing folks and a lot of friendly people in your boot camp, focus on being the best trainer that you can be. Because if you get your clients' results, the few that you have, people, people are going to notice, they're going to ask how they got the results, and then you will not be able to keep um, people out of your boot camp. You have to fight them off with a stick. So, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, remember, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to call me, text me, or email me. The best way to reach me is through Facebook. I'm just so used to saying call me, text me, or email me. But a lot of times I get ideas for these videos um, from questions that you ask me on the Facebook. So hit me up on the Facebook, um, become my friend, and uh, then I can help more of you. As usual, like this video, comment on this video. Um, subscribe to this channel. If you just happen to stumble upon this video, then um, this channel is dedicated toward helping uh, regular people become personal trainers, helping personal trainers become great personal trainers and boot camp owners, helping boot camp owners become very successful boot camp owners. So there's going to be a uh, wide variety of videos on this page. So subscribe to this channel and I will do my best to hold your attention. If you're on the Facebook, share this video. If you're on Twitter, retweet this video because there are a lot of other trainers out there that would not have access to, to this information if it wasn't for your help. So if you find this to be of any particular value, please pay it forward. So, um, remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress levels will get rest on slap, anybody. I will see you all tomorrow or the next day, and you have a good one.